Ellie is one of the main and playable characters in The Last of Us, Left Behind, and the upcoming Last of Us Part 2, and one of the main characters in the comic American Dreams. Ellie's official description describes her as a brave 14-year-old girl. Ellie has grown up in a harsh world, and it's all she's ever known. She's an orphan who was raised in a boarding school run by the military within the bounds of a quarantine zone. Naive and curious about the outside world, Ellie is wise beyond her years and highly capable of taking care of herself and those around her. Obsessed with comic books, CDs, and other pop culture, her knowledge base is filled with remnants of a world that no longer exists. Ellie was born sometime in or around the year 2019. By that time, the cordyceps brain fungus has spread, and as a result, she grew up in a military quarantine zone in Boston, Massachusetts. And before Ellie's mother Anna passed away, she would ask Marlene to look after her. However, Ellie didn't meet Marlene until she was 13 years old, in The Last of Us American Dreams. In the events of American Dreams, we see a 13-year-old Ellie, already sporting her eyebrow scar, arriving by bus to the Boston quarantine zone. Once inside the zone, Ellie is approached by a guard who knows her. He warns her not to pull any of her old stunts, and that he won't be around to bail her out. Ellie asks the guard to take her with him, to which he refuses, telling her he's got his own family to look after. Mad, Ellie says she can manage just fine on her own, and before she's able to make her way inside the building, a boy punches her in the face. Before a real fight breaks out, a girl by the name of Riley grabs the boy's fist and takes him and his friends to the ground. Scaring the boys away, Riley asks Ellie what they wanted, to which Ellie replies, something not theirs. Riley tells Ellie she should find someone to watch her back, but before she's able to finish talking, Ellie interrupts her and tells her she didn't ask for her advice. Riley then tells Ellie to run, and then proceeds to run away herself. Since Ellie stayed put, not knowing what Riley was talking about, a man ends up sending her to the office. Once in the man's office, he begins reading off some of the things Ellie's done, including fighting, theft, running away, disobeying orders, and more fighting. The man then goes off about the fireflies, referring to them as murderers, and makes Ellie clean vehicles as punishment. While cleaning, Ellie finds that her Walkman was stolen, and begins wondering how Riley did it. She then notices a finger sticking from the jeep that she was cleaning, and dumps out her bucket. In what appears to be the cafeteria of the school, we see Riley talking about the fireflies. One of the guys tells her that a jeep was shot up, and he heard three soldiers died, to which Riley says the fireflies had to have been provoked or cornered. A mad Ellie storms into the room, and asks Riley where her Walkman is. After a little back and forth, Riley tosses Ellie her Walkman, telling her, You've got shit taste in music anyway. Later that night, Ellie sees Riley sneaking out, and decides to follow her. Tapping Riley on the shoulder, Ellie tells her to get someone to watch her back. After telling Ellie to go back to bed, Ellie tells Riley that she's going to show her how to get out, or they'll argue about it until they get caught. After asking Ellie if she can keep up, the two leave the zone. As they're sneaking out, Ellie asks Riley how she knows her name. Riley tells her she has her ways, and that Ellie seems crazy enough to be interesting. In the second issue of American Dreams, we see Ellie and Riley jumping rooftops, some of them dangerously high. After they stop, Ellie and Riley have a conversation about the future. Riley tells Ellie she won't be spending the rest of her life with an asshole, telling her who to shoot and where to shit, and goes on to tell her that in less than three months she turns 16, and that's how long she has to find a way out. Ellie asks Riley what else is there, and Riley changes the subject, asking Ellie if she's ever ridden a horse before. Entering the mall, Ellie makes comments about some mannequins being creepy, and notices Roger's arcade. Running inside, Ellie begins trying to use one of the games, telling Riley she's read about Triple Phoenix, a popular three-player brawler based on a cartoon about mutated pigeons. Riley tells Ellie that it's a children's game, and tells her about a real game, Angel Knives. As Riley puts it, Angel Knives was a hardcore one-on-one -on -one fighter with hundreds of combos and an insane final boss fight. And the character of Angel Knives has a finishing move where she punches a hole through her enemy's chest and kicks their head off. Taking Ellie further into the mall, Riley introduces her to an older man named Winston. Winston tells Riley that every time she brings another kid there, she risks getting him in trouble, and asks if she has at least brought him a little something. Riley then pulls out a bottle of Glenfiddich, courtesy of head asshole at the school. Riley then asks Winston to teach little Ellie how to ride. Taking Ellie outside, Riley shows her the horse, and comments on how lazy Winston is, telling her to make sure he takes her around the mall at least once. After a conversation with Riley, Winston plops Ellie on top of the horse, and tells Riley to keep her paws off his alcohol. When Ellie's finished her ride, they meet back up with Riley. Winston tells the two to go home and stay out of trouble, and then an explosion goes off outside. Someone on the walkie-talkie that Riley swiped from Winston said there was an explosion in 12th Sector, and there was three hostile groups that were likely affiliated with the Fireflies. Excited, Riley tells her that tonight they find the Fireflies. Ellie thinks Riley is crazy, and when Riley takes off to go find them, Ellie follows behind. In the third issue of American Dreams, we see Ellie trying to convince Riley that what they're doing is a really bad idea. The voice on the walkie-talkie then tells him that there are hostiles at McMillan and Jordan. Ellie again tries to talk Riley out of this, to which she tells her that they will stick to the rooftops. After arriving at the Fireflies' location, Riley hands Ellie a smoke bomb and tells her this is a shot at changing their fate, and asks Ellie if she's just going to let them control her life, or if she'll fight for something else. Saying screw it, Ellie chucks a smoke bomb down at the men firing on the Fireflies, and gives them a chance to escape. 
Celebrating too soon, the men who were attacking the Fireflies spot the girls and begin firing at them. Running from the area, Ellie and Riley take a break and sit down beside some dumpsters. While talking about how Riley acquired her smoke grenades, the girls spot someone standing in the doorway of a building across from them. As the woman began walking towards them, Riley quickly realized the woman was infected. The infected charges at them and takes Riley down. Grabbing a rock, Riley beat the infected in the face, and the infected took a bite at Riley's arm. Thinking fast, Ellie grabbed a board and started beating the infected until it broke, and the infected then got on top of her. Grabbing a piece of the wood, Riley drove it through the back of the infected's neck, killing it and saving Ellie. After taking in what just happened, Ellie quickly grabbed Riley's arm to check for a bite, and luckily the infected only managed to rip her jacket. Telling Ellie how much she loved her jacket, Ellie hugged Riley, happy that her new friend was alright. As the girls stood there, two more infected charged out of the building, and started chasing them down. Coming to a dead end, it looked as though Riley's luck had finally run out, but before the infected could reach them, the fireflies killed them. Riley thanks them and tells them that she and Ellie were the ones who threw the smoke grenades, and as she's introducing herself, one of the men shocked her, and hit Ellie. As the man got ready to shock Ellie, a voice hollered to him to stop, the voice belonging to Marlene. Marlene asks what Ellie's doing out here, and tells the men to bag them and get them out. In the fourth and final issue of American Dreams, Ellie wakes up and overhears the Fireflies talking about how they need to reorganize, move, and blowing a stalker's head off. While the men are talking, Marlene shows up, and tells them that a Firefly by the name of Carrie is being sewn up, and the doctor thinks he's got a chance of surviving. She also tells him that she needs to get something from the bakery hideout. Telling Ellie to hold still, Marlene cuts her free. After one of the men untie Riley, Marlene puts an envelope in Ellie's pocket and tells her to open it when she gets back. Riley tells her that she and Ellie aren't going back and they want to join the Fireflies. After Marlene tells her she should be dead, Riley says she knows Marlene, the leader of the Fireflies. She also tells Marlene that she knows the entire Firefly Charter by heart and that she wants to help restore the country and save the people. Marlene tells Riley that she's going back to the school and that she's not wasting her time with this. And as Marlene's talking, a group of smugglers invade. The smugglers attempt to rob the Fireflies and Marlene offers them some ration cards instead. One of the men say they're not negotiating, and shoot one of the Fireflies. Pulling out her pistol, Marlene opens fire on the attackers. While the fight's going on, Ellie tells Riley that now's her chance to escape, but instead, Riley decides to stay and fight. As Riley dove to the ground for a gun, one of the men grabbed her by her hood. Thinking quickly, Ellie grabbed a brick and chucked it at the man's head, giving Riley enough time to grab the gun and shoot him. Marlene finished the job and shot the man in the head, and Riley tells her this is the second time they've helped the Fireflies today. Having enough, Marlene took Riley down and asked her if this is all a game to her, telling her that just because she's memorized some words doesn't mean she understands what it's like to be a Firefly. Riley tells her she knows all about sacrifice and tells her she watched her father turn and rip her mother apart. In the end, she had to kill her own father. Marlene then holds her down to the dead Firefly and tells her that this man believed in the Fireflies too and he died at the hands of the people he wanted to protect. Holding a gun up to Riley, Marlene tells her that she can make her a Firefly right now. Ellie gets mad and one of the men hold her back. Marlene then tells Riley that she could just maim her and that plenty of fireflies end up as cripples. Getting ready to shoot Riley in the leg, Ellie bit the man's thumb who was holding her back and stole his gun. Marlene tells Ellie that she wasn't going to do anything, but before Marlene could get the rest of her words out, Ellie shot at the wall next to her head. Marlene asks Ellie to take it easy and Ellie questions how she knows her name. Marlene tells her that she knows more than her name and that the letter she gave her was from Ellie's mother, Anna, before she died. Marlene then starts listing off things that Ellie's done, such as trying to run away from the last school she was in seven times. She has over a dozen counts of assault, and she stabbed a kid in the knee with a compass. Marlene goes on to tell Ellie that she had people watching over her making sure she was safe, and that it's what she promised Anna she would do, and that's why she put Ellie in the military school. Ellie asks Riley what she should do. Riley tells her that it's the truth, and that Marlene's been honest about everything. Talking briefly about Ellie's mother, Marlene tells her that Anna gave up everything to save her, and hands her Anna's pocket knife. Leaving the Fireflies, Ellie tells Riley that they should just leave the zone. Riley tells her that that would only give them a different way to die. And they return to their lives in the military school. Said I walked beside the still waters and they restore my soul. But I can't walk.